Hey, what's up guys? Today's video is geared towards the beginner and we're gonna talk about the difference between an interlock kit and a transfer switch when it comes to backfeeding your house during a power outage. We're gonna show diagrams of the electricity flow uh, that goes on behind the walls so you get a better idea of what's going on and talk about the pros and cons of each so that hopefully by the end, you'll have a better idea of what you would like to have professionally installed so that you keep your house safe and the lights on uh, during a power outage. Let's get into it. All right, in this first slide, we're going to take a look at what happens under normal operating conditions when everything's running fine and you don't have a transfer switch or an interlock kit installed. So let's take a look. You have your utility power here, and each of these lines, the red and the black, are each 120 volts for a total of 240. That passes through your power meter and over to your main breaker, where each of the lines connects to one of these buses down here and energizes it with 120 uh, volts each. Now, keep in mind these buses, if you're new to this and that's who this video is for um each of the buses are kind of interlinked like this they don't touch they're separated but it's kind of like your fingers going together with space in between now if you have a breaker these breakers alternate on which bus they jump to so the top one might be on this bus and the next one would be on the other one and how it basically works if you want to visualize it is pretend you have a breaker right on my knuckle and then you have a breaker in between the fingers and a breaker on the knuckle in between knuckle in between. And so if a breaker's on the knuckle, it's going to go on this bu bus here. And if it's in between, it jumps over to this one here. So if you have a double pole breaker, um, you're going to basically have what looks like you're probably familiar with it, a breaker and a breaker with a, a vertical bar in between that links them. And basically what that's doing is one is grabbing from this bus and the other is grabbing from this one, which gives you the 240 volts. So now that we have that um, covered, you've got the 240 going in. Each of these uh, buses gets 120 and then all of your appliances running off of these, um, they are energized. Everything works as normal. Let's get on to slide two. All right, slide number two, we're gonna take a look at normal conditions. Everything's running fine, but we installed an interlock kit. So we're gonna talk kind of what an interlock kit does and um, how it is something that is essential, that or transfer switch. We're gonna find out which one's best for you. But here, let's take a look at this. Um, the interlock kit, uh, this circle right here, I just blew it up. If you were able to look closely at it, uh, you would see this gray thing right here is a flat sheet of metal basically. And it just creates a physical barrier between um, two of the circuits, two of the switches here to make sure that if one is on, the other one has to be off and vice versa. So in this slide here, we have the um, interlock slid over all the way to the right and just has mounted screws here, these black dots with a little um, area for it to slide on. And it's pushed all the way to the right, which allows the main disconnect here in your uh, breaker box to be up. I just labeled it green, so it's on the on position. And when it's slid over to the right, and allows that to go up through this notch here. Uh, then down below, this double pole breaker that would backfeed your generator power, um, the metal physically butts up against it and obstructs it from turning on. So if the main breaker is on, this double pole breaker has to be off. It cannot physically be turned on whatsoever. So during normal operating conditions, power goes in just like normal. It goes over to the main breaker through the power meter. And then it goes down each of these buses and powers everything just like before. There is no change whatsoever in what's going on. We didn't have to rewire anything. Everything's good to go. Now, if we look at uh, the double pole breaker here, it leads down to the inlet box here. And this is where you'd plug the generator in with a 240 volt cord. And it sends up one line of 120, another line of 120, and it would go up to this. So your interlock kit that you get, it's going to vary depending on your make and model of your breaker box that you have. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Some of them slide up, some of them slide down, left and right, you know, a two-part thing. It's basically, it can only end up in one of two positions though. So it's either going to allow the main breaker to be on, or it's going to allow the um, generator backfeeding uh, circuit to be on, but not both at the same time. This physically prohibits you from backfeeding power to a lineman who's just trying to restore your power for you. Um, and we'll get to that in the next slide. Okay, so we take a look at what happens when the power goes out and we have the interlock kit. So in this case, we to backfeed our house, we had to turn off the main breaker here. So we flipped it down so it's now red and it creates this void here. And we slide the interlock kit over to the left now instead of to the right. And what that does is it makes a physical 
uh, barrier here so the switch cannot be turned back on. And once it does that, it frees the uh, generator double pole breaker here to be turned on. And if you wanted to test to see if the main power is back on, if you suspect after a few hours it might be, this is what protects you from killing somebody who's working on the line. You can't just turn on the main breaker and turn on your lights that weren't powered by the generator. You have to physically turn off the double pole breaker to the generator, and then you have to slide the interlock back over to the right, and then you have to turn on the uh, main disconnect to check to see if the power's back on. But in this case, if we follow the current, um, I highlighted everything, highlighted everything in yellow so you can follow, but we have the current coming through the inlet box to um, the breaker here, the main breaker box. And if you remember the double pole breaker, we have one that feeds on this um, bus here, and then the other one that's below in between the knuckles feeds on the other one. So when you back feed power into it, you're lighting up one of these with 120 and the other one with 120. So that's how we back feed with the generator. And it is safe to do so with a properly installed interlock kit. And with an interlock kit, you can turn on any of these circuits any of these breakers that you want to go to whatever appliances that you want. I have these labeled non-essential appliances. We'll get to that with the transfer switch. It's just a labeling thing. But you can power any of these circuits that you want. You're not limited like a transfer switch, which we'll get to in one second. So this makes it easy to overload your generator. So you want to be careful. Just because you have power going in doesn't mean you can, you know, turn on whatever you want. If you have a 5,000 watt or 5kw generator you can't just turn on your sump pump refrigerator microwave curling iron and um you know well pump and expect to get away with it it's not going to happen you're going to have to ration out your power at the breaker box and pick and choose what you're powering so that you don't max out the generator that you have now if we flip to the next slide we have normal conditions with a transfer switch installed now what a transfer switch basically is if we look down here it's going to be a separate box right next to your main breaker and it's going to look like a little sub panel and basically it'll they come in different makes and models and different variations but the basic concept is you're going to have a general switch uh, just a the, the main switch on it that will pow that will switch over to utility power or it will switch to generator power. It's just one or the other and it can't be both. Now below it, you're going to have a set number, a finite number of breakers that you can use on this. So you're going to have to pick and choose. Usually it's six, eight, or 10. And uh, you're gonna have to pick and choose which one of these circuits in your main breaker box you deem essential to use during a power outage because what you're going to do is install this box and then any of the essential circuits that you have you're going to basically combine the wires from the transfer switch to the main breaker you'll have an electrician do this and basically what's going to happen during normal operating conditions is the utility power comes in like normal flows to your main breaker and then your main breaker when you have a transfer switch installed will directly power all of your non-essential appliances directly from the breaker box itself. The, you did not transfer them over to the transfer switch. It's just going to be going directly from the main breaker to the non-essential appliances. However, the essential appliances, you're going to have the current is just going to follow the, the wires that you have, and it's going to jump over to the transfer switch to this uh, breaker over here. And from there, it's going to run up to your essential appliances. So during normal operating conditions, again, everything works as it should. It's just using this transfer switch as an intermediary. As long as you have the switch uh, properly toggled here so that I just have green pointing towards the utility power. So that is what um, it's going to feed off of. It will not feed off of generator power. And again, we have this inlet box here and two 120 volt lines coming into the transfer switch that are doing nothing while um, the power is running off of utility. Now, when we have a power outage with a transfer switch, what basically happens is we physically turn or toggle the switch here so that it goes off red now for utility and green for generator. We toggle that switch and we hook up our cord from our generator to the inlet box and that supplies the 240 volts to our transfer switch and then any of our breakers here that we deemed essential you can use. Maybe not necessarily all at once like we talked about before. You might overload the generator but you get to choose from the 6, 8, 10 uh, breakers that you have what you'd like to use and this switch instead of having a physical barrier between the generator uh, back feeding breaker 
uh, double pole breaker and the main breaker, instead of having a physical like sheet of metal that's just a physical barrier, you now have it wired in as a switch. So it's either utility power or it's generator power. It can't be both. It's one or the other. So it's another way to prevent you from backfeeding into the utility. Now, backfeeding, if without any of these, it, it's risky because you can have this inlet box and you can run these over. Let's go back to let's go back to this slide where we have an interlock kit. Now let's pretend we're just backfeeding and we don't have the interlock installed whatsoever. Uh, this is why it's dangerous and why it's illegal in most places is that you backfeed this power from the generator into the double pole breaker. You turn it on, but you you made sure you were good. You made sure to turn off your main breaker. You don't have the interlock kit. It's just on the honor system here. You turn it off and you run, you pick and choose what you want to run and everything goes all right. Now, let's just say a few hours into the power outage, you want to see if the power is back on, but you're only running, you know, three or four breakers. And you know, let's say that the lights in the kids' room are not being powered right now. So you're going to turn on the main breaker really quick, just for a few seconds, just to check and see, did the lights come on? Because if they did, well, then I can, you know, turn off the generator. Well, if you turn this on while the generator is still running, you are now backfeeding power. You open this switch and you now, all of this power, instead of it just being isolated into the house, it will flow back out through the lines and it can kill any of the linemen that are working out there. So that is something you don't want to do. And if, even if you think I would never do that, what's to say someone in your family wouldn't do it accidentally? Just check to see, are the lights back on? Let me flip the switch. I'm just going to do it for five seconds. Again, that five seconds can be very, very deadly. So that is why we need to have either an interlock kit or a transfer switch installed. They both make it physically impossible to back feed into the utility power lines from your generator. All right, hopefully you understood that explanation and let's talk about what is best for you. Should you get an interlock kit or should you get a transfer switch? Overall, the interlock kit, if you're, that's usually easier to self-install if you're a little handy. Um, you can get the parts for 30 to 75 just for the interlock kit itself. Uh, again, it's gonna vary based on your make and model. You're going to have to find what you need specifically. Now, the problem with an interlock kit comes in here is that pretty much all of them, they need the double pole breaker for the back feeding generator to be at the very top. So if yours isn't there, you're gonna need to hire an electrician to get that moved up and have them mess with that. So you're gonna have to pay that installation fee, labor, who knows what they charge, 40 to $100 an hour. Depends on where you live, I'm sure. But uh, it, it can get costly. Both options are going to be costly if you outsource it to a professional. But the interlock kit allows you to be able to use any of the circuits to power any of your appliance. Maybe not necessarily all at once, but you do have access to them. However, it makes it easy to overload the generator if you're not careful with what you're doing. If you turn on too many of them, you trip your generator, start tripping breakers, start having problems. You don't want to get into that. But again, they're easy to self-install if your back feeding double pole breaker here is already at the top. It just takes a couple screws and you're all set to go. Um, but if you need to have an inlet box um, set up and you need to have wires run over, then again, outsource that call around and you might need to get a permit. You might need to get inspection fees. You never know. Make sure everything's up to code. All right. And as far as a transfer switch installing that, the parts themselves are going to cost anywhere from $400 to $600 probably, um, just a base level. And then getting it installed, you're probably going to be looking up towards $1,000 total, $1,200, something like that. It just depends on how much work needs to get done. Do they need to put in the inlet box? Do you already have one? How much of this have you already done? It just, you know, it all depends. Again, there's that limitation with the transfer switch in that you only get a finite number of circuits. You have to pick ahead of time what circuits you want to use, and you can't change your mind after the fact, basically, unless you have this rewired by an electrician. So what you put on this panel is what you're going to get to use. And any of your 240 volt um, appliances that you have, they are going to take up two spaces on this um transfer switch just like they do in the breaker box. So now I personally think that a transfer switch would probably be best for somebody with a mid-size to a small generator somewhere in there because this forces you ahead of time to pick and choose and you have to be way more conscientious about what you're powering. So if you have a small to medium-sized generator like five kilowatts or below, um, somewhere in that range, maybe up to 7,500 kilowatts or below, it might be best to get a transfer switch just because that forces you ahead of time to pick and choose what you're going to do and you have less of a chance of overloading it. If you were to go with an interlock kit, um, 
since you can use all of the breakers, it might be best for a generator that's like 10 kW or above. And um, since you have less of a chance of overloading it, um, it gives you just a little bit more room for forgiveness. But either way, whichever one you go with, just pick one and go with it and have it professionally installed. This way you don't kill a line worker because if you do that, you will be charged with that. So don't do that. Don't do something stupid. All right, guys, I hope this helped you out in understanding the basics of how a transfer switch and an interlock kit work. And uh, hopefully you get a feel for what's right for you. Personally, if I had a smaller to medium sized generator, I would go with a transfer switch. And if I had a larger generator, I'd go with an interlock kit. But again, if you already kind of have things together where you can just put a few screws in and get the interlock kit in and have it installed correctly, then that might just be the way to go regardless, save some money. But Again, if you're unsure about any of this, consult with your local licensed electrician and get them to give you a quote and um, give you a consultation and tell you what's going on and what you're going to be looking at. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button. Uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, have a great day. Take it easy.